Hello everyone and welcome to the Hippie Geeks. This is our dog Sophie. While she may be cute, she has a deep, dark secret. She loves to eat not only cat food, but cat poop as well. Actually, I'm pretty sure she prefers the poo nuggets to the food. She is just that disgusting. I am done dealing with it, and in this video I'm going to show you what I did to prevent it. This is our kitty cafe area currently. It's easy to access for cleanup, but that also means that it's easy access for Sophie. Whenever we leave the house, we have to build a fort out of kitchen chairs just to keep her away. Sometimes we forget and come home to find litter on her nose and a guilty look in her eye. I was going to make a permanent barrier to go here, but we decided on something else instead. This is the area we will be moving the kitty cafe to. It is an alcove by the ferret cage underneath our winter herb growing shelf. The litter box will get tucked behind the old storage boxes with the food and water on the other side. All we will need to do now is make a barrier to keep Sophie out. Now it's time to go dig through our wood pile and see what we can do. Step 1. Determine the pattern. I found a leftover piece of 1 quarter inch MDF from another project which will work perfectly for the central part of the partition. As the intent is to keep Sophie out, but to let the kitties in, we need a cat sized opening. We have always liked the shape of the Middle Eastern arches, and that is the shape that we emulated. I sketched out a few lines to make it easier to mirror the arcs, and then got it drawn out and ready to cut. Step 2. Cut the materials. I had already determined how wide I needed to make the barrier, and had marked the MDF accordingly. Before cutting it on the table saw, I just needed to verify the measurement. As always, measure twice, cut once. Though really, that should be measured two or four times because once you make that cut, there's no going back. Now it's time to get the table saw ready and set to make the cut. Always be incredibly careful when using a table saw. Mine does not have a guard which makes it even more dangerous. I'm extremely careful with it and even then I nearly cut my thumb off a couple of years ago. However, their danger is matched by their usefulness and as long as you are careful, they are definitely worthwhile. I needed to make one more adjustment and then this happened. Yes, the plastic handle broke right off. I'm not terribly surprised as it was really cold out that night, but I was really disappointed. However, the show must go on, so I used my trusty Leatherman and it was able to get me through the rest of the project. Time to make the cut. Always keep your fingers well away from the blade. Gently push the wood through, and as long as you measured everything correctly, it'll be right on the line, leaving you with exactly what you wanted. Now it is time to cut the 2x2 framing that will go around the MDF. First, I'm going to cut each of the pieces to length, squaring off the ends. I will miter them all after I have cut them to the correct size. Next, I will miter each of the ends at a 45 degree angle. These angles will match up all the way around and give the finished project a very clean look. I want to inset the MDF into a notch we will create in the framing. First, I'm going to measure how deep I want the notch to go, in this case, one half inch. Then, we will have to set how wide we want the notch to be. Our MDF is 1 quarter inch thick, so the notch will need to be at least that wide. I'm going to set my blade just past the center of the 2x2. That way I can run the piece through, then flip it around and run it through again, and it should give me the size I want. You can use this method to make even wider notches simply by moving the guide out after each cut. Once you have it set, run all four of the pieces over the blade twice, flipping the piece around between each pass. Make sure that you are cutting on the correct side, as having the notch on the outside will mean you need to redo that piece. At this point it started to rain, so I took the camera inside before finishing up. I cut a pair of 12 inch feet to go on the bottom, and rounded the edges with our palm sander. A short while later the rain stopped, and I brought the camera back out. It was time to cut out the kitty opening in the MDF. I'm going to cut it out using a jigsaw, but that requires a pilot hole. Use a drill bit at least as large as the width of the blade. Place the hole in the corners, and then get the jigsaw ready to do the rest. Use the jigsaw and carefully follow the lines you drew to cut out the shape. Take your time and be very careful. Don't worry if there are minor imperfections in your cut, as that will be evened out with sanding, but make sure not to stray too far from your line. Once you are done with the first side, move around and do the other side. We are going to leave the bottom for last, as there is a measurement that we need to verify. Grab the framing piece that you will be using on the bottom. We want the opening in the MDF to be flush with the framing piece, so slide the MDF into the groove and mark where the edge really is. Again, take your time and cut nice straight lines, finishing up the opening in the MDF. Step 3. Sand everything. 
At this point, you're going to want to take some time and sand everything that we just cut. Smooth all the edges, sand off any markings the wood had, and in general, just clean everything up. This is the main prep work that needs to happen before you apply a finish to the wood, and as we will be assembling the pieces before we paint, they will need to look as good as possible now. If you need to use wood putty, this is the time to do it, along with any other repairs needed. Step 4. Assembly with all of the work requiring power tools done, I was able to move inside. I started by laying out all four pieces of the framing, then it was off to find the wood glue, which will take considerably less time in this video than it did in real life. Take the glue and spread a nice, solid bead along the notch that was cut into each piece. You don't want to go crazy with it, as any extra will just be squeezed out and make a mess, but you want to be sure that you have enough in it that it will cover all the surfaces. Next, grab a paintbrush or a q-tip and spread the glue around to the three sides of the notch. This will make sure that you get the strongest bond possible. You can also use screws in the four corners for extra stability, but as we will be using a clear coat on the framing instead of paint, I want it to look as clean as possible and we'll be relying on the glue to hold it all together. Finally, we are going to get some glue on each of the mitered faces. Again, you want to get enough on there to cover everything without putting so much that you'll have a lot of extra squeeze out when you clamp it all together. Now it is time to put the framing and the MDF partition together. Wood glue doesn't dry very quickly, so take your time as there is no reason to rush. Place all of the framing pieces around the partition and line up the corners as best you can. You want it all to be pretty well lined up before proceeding to the next part. This is the part where we clamp everything together. A lot of the strength of a glue bond is determined by the clamping pressure used. A strong, even clamping pressure will help to ensure that your project will not fall apart. This is especially important when you will not be using screws or nails to help hold the joint together. They make fancy clamping kits for use with picture frames, but as our framing is made out of 2x2 material, we can simply use a ratchet strap. Make sure to run it nice and flat all the way around the frame, use the ratcheting mechanism to clamp it all together tightly, making sure that it doesn't slip off and that the frame isn't looking out of square. Once it is clamped together, we are going to check to make sure that it is still square. With any rectangular structure, the fastest way to check that it is square is to measure the distance from opposite corners at an angle across the piece. If the two numbers from each side match, then what you have built is square. If one of the numbers is larger than the other, bring the two corners with the longer distance closer together and check again. Once they match, you'll know it's square. When it is done being clamped, it is time to walk away for a couple of hours and let the glue dry. It will not be fully cured at that point, but it will be enough that we can finalize the assembly. After letting it sit, come back and remove the ratchet strap. Pick the piece up and make sure that the glue has cured enough that it doesn't fall apart. If everything looks ready, it's time to get the feet put on. For this part, we will need a drill and a couple of screws. As we will not be seeing the bottom of the piece, I am fine using screws here to strengthen the bond. Take the feet and mark where the midpoint is for placement of the screw. Countersink the holes into the wood, but be sure that it doesn't come through and drill into the rest of your piece or your kitchen table. Seriously, do not put holes in the kitchen table, you will never hear the end of it. Take the screws and drill them into the countersunk holes. You don't want to screw it all the way in, just enough so that the tip pops through the other side. This will help to hold it in place as you sink the screw. Once you have the screw started, put some wood glue around the area where the tip is placed. Flip the piece over and get ready to attach the feet. Place the foot on the bottom and line it up where you want it to go. Use the drill and sink the screw in. The two pieces will likely not be tightly attached, so simply back the screw out and then sink it right back in. This should make the pieces suck up tightly together, making for a strong bond with the glue. Do this for both sides and then flip the piece over and admire your hard work. Here is the completed barrier. We could have just used an off-the-shelf dog gate, but that wouldn't have allowed the cats to get through and wouldn't look nearly as stylish. This concludes part one of this project. In part two, we will be painting the MDF and clear coating the frame and feet. Would something like this be useful in your life? If so, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. If this is your first time here on the Hippie Geeks, it would be wonderful to have you subscribe. This channel is all about helping you unleash your life and create a world that you love. Creating something yourself is an amazing way to not only help out your wallet and the planet, it feels great to be able to do it. Subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and come back every Wednesday for fresh content. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next one.